Jericho got a little bit dirty. And the tractor too, of course. Uh, we got the hay cut here. So, now <laughs> just hope it dries in time. I think the grass will. We didn't cut the bottoms because that's where it was real muddy. So we'll see what happens here in a, I think we should be able to bail this on Saturday. So get this good and dry, get it bailed up. And then next week there's a rain and next weekend will be a love it for Megan's graduation from Texas Tech. And uh, then we'll see about cutting and Bella and a couple other places. I know we got a place we're looking at tomorrow. Let's see if we can uh, work out something on it. It's a small place, but it'll produce a little bit of hay for us. Hopefully it's close by. Alex has got the uh, directions. One thing I wanted to point out here when you're cutting with a moco or any kind of cutter, a hay cutter, you'll get some of this uh, grass that's left up. And what happens is when you hit mud, this black clay, and it's wet and it's muddy, it'll get gummed up in there on the blades for a little while. And so once it works its way out and gets chunked out, that's when it starts freeing back up. So that's where we get some of these strips that are open. You see the grass is drying. Actually, it's real dry, actually. In fact, this might be available tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, that's really good. I'll probably wait till Saturday because I know in the bottom it's going to be more wet. So we have that to worry about. But I didn't, you know, I didn't cut the bottom bottom, but I did cut some areas where it's a little bit wet. But I think this is good to go. Yeah. Jeez, I might build this tomorrow night. But put a, in a, a put a polarizer filter on here, trying to add out right now on the camera. My other videos that I made, I'm gonna see if I can get them, to see if I can adjust them in the app or not. I got a couple different apps I can use, and see if I can get the glare off on those. That's gonna be fun. But uh, well, it looks like we got. Good amount of grass. I mean, it's not, it wasn't thick in here, but up there it was extremely thick. And uh, so that's going to take a little bit longer to dry. Here's a little bit thinner. Yeah. And that shows. So we'll walk up here. Hopefully, the bees won't attack us. Every time we hit, you know, fire at mound, which we have a lot up here, that black clay, we just stick to those blades and just build a fire up here. Sorry for my language, but I hate fire ants too. They're everywhere. But when you hit them and it's this wet and muddy like that, it just sticks to your blades. Here's another one. Oh, gosh. We've got a bunch of them. Somebody ever says, hey, we got a way to get rid of all the fire ants just give us a thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars whatever if I got home figure out how to come with money because fire ants are a nightmare to have around so up here you see a little bit thicker grass we had a little bit of rye up here and I said up there behind Alex's house around his there was a lot of rye so it came out a lot thicker I need to hear the thickness a little bit better. Still, it's drying out good. Still a little bit more. Still a little bit moisture in it. So, right, I'll check it tomorrow. I'll bring the moisture meter out. We'll come out and check the moisture in it. See what it looks like. Yes, yeah, so that's got some moisture in it still. But heck, tomorrow this might be ready to go. But I need to. I'll check up there first because that's where it's going to be more wet. Up, Alex's house is over there. You go on that side of it. And that stuff was thick up there, boy. And uh, it was uh, it was a little bit of different grass. There was a lot of rye up there. And uh, even 
there was even some Johnson grass up already in it. And of course now getting it cut, I let that Bermuda that's up there in that little park come up. And uh, so we're looking at the bees, man. There's sure a lot of activity up here. I can see them flying around. Don't know if you can see it on video. We'll check that a little bit later. See here, we must see another uh, ant mound or something because it didn't cut as good. And uh, yeah, the bees are definitely. I don't want to go over there. I think they're probably pissed off at me still. Or uh, opening them up sometimes when it's uh, not the nicest weather in the world. Well, and plus I got. Uh, I think there's three, four. Four of the colony, you can't see one. I got one, I got, well, there's actually two you can't see. Um, I took this one colony, you see right here, the small one. It's just a uh, honey super with a brood box. I took it the other day, because there probably was about, I don't know, 50, 60,000 bees all over it. And the inside was full. So I split it. There's a brood box sitting next to one behind it. That's part of them. There's queen cells all in the thing. And then there's a one that's further back. There's a little uh, five frame nuke sitting right next to it that I put uh, some good frames, some good nurse bees in. And it had you know four or five uh, queen cells in it also. So, you know, that'll give me two colonies off this one. And they were actually very, very calm. That one's been a very calm colony. And I will say that queen came from. Uh, Rusty Rhodes, he's out of Michigan. He comes out of Texas also during the summer. And uh, that queen has been superb. That call, he's always been calm and just, you know, builds up fast, you know, puts a lot of honey in. So hopefully he'll get some more queens for me this year. I know I got some on order with him. And we'll get those in and we'll requeen all of these. Um, I got enough order to requeen these and do some splits. And I need to split that one on the side. And I think there's two other ones there I need to split. And then I caught a wild hive um, over on the sister Law's place back over here, back over on the inside of those trees. And so I want to queen it with a good queen. And I think those queens work out good. What happens is that that colony and that colony and one of these two over here were uh, buck fast queens. So in Queens, there's different varieties. There's Italian, there's Caucasian, there's a Cornelia, whatever they call it, right? I call them Cornies. There's Saskatchewan, there's Russian, there's things like that. So those three have Buckfast, and, and that one back there too, yeah. Have, we have Buckfast Queens in them, but it's been three years since I've queened them. And probably what's happened, the reason they're so aggressive now, is that they probably changed their queen, not superseded their queen, and that second generation buck fast is always a mean you know what when she comes out. And that's what's happened there with that. And so those bees, you get, if I were to step any closer, I'm surprised they're not out here on me right now. They're probably finding nectar somewhere. I just saw one get real close. But if I were getting closer, man, they would be all over me trying to get me. And I don't have my suit on today. So I don't feel like getting stuck. But we'll get all these requeen. And I'm waiting on those queens. I got a couple more queens coming from another person over here in Whitney, Texas, hopefully. Because uh, I want to get this up to about 20 colonies over here uh, this year. Um, I got to build some boxes. I'll probably put a video, do a video on building uh, brood boxes. Um, I've been building my own. I, I bought, originally I bought the ones, you know, a lot of them you see out there. But I've been building them also. And it's just, you know, it's just something fun to do. It's cheap, saves some money. I do order my frames, I do order my foundation to go in them uh, from uh, either Man Lake or uh, from Data. I think that's how you say it. So I order from, you know, sure one's got a good deal. I like the Man Lake ones because I can get that extra uh, coat of wax on them and the bees just build them out fast. So um, that's what's going on there. Those are not my cows. That's a, this is a different property behind me. So, like I said, we raise shorthorns. We do have a couple of uh, off-color ones in there because we got some Kianina genetics in there also. And uh, we're doing, you know, some crosses on the shorthorn bulls with that too. And those are not mine over there. Those are the Chingadetas over there. So anyway, I won't say anything more about that. If you want to know why I'm so down on that ones, you can ask me later. I can send you a hundred photos, thousand photos of how those cows are treated. And it's not good. And nobody would do anything about it. But anyway, there's the homestead. There's my cows.
beautiful short ones on grass. Just put weight on. It's unbelievable. During the winter, this is the hay they eat. So what you see out here, you know, it's not Bermuda. It's not alfalfa. It's not, you know, anything special. And I guess I do have plans to start putting Bermuda in here, coastal in here in some areas, and putting in Sudan going forward. Probably not this year. I'm too far behind on, you know, I'd have to replow. I'd have to plow this. Never have plowed this ground over here on this side. Where they are right now in that front section, that's been plowed. I uh, did not get out there and pack or do it, run a uh, cultivator over it. I did run a disc over it to break it up some, but it's still pretty, you know, it's not rough. It's just got a lot of clumps in it. So the plan is we'll cut hay through the summer. I don't think I'm going to come in here like I thought about doing, uh, putting in, uh, you know, doing a no-till drill, coming here putting Sudan in. It's getting kind of late in the year already for that, actually, for us. Even though the weather's not saying it is, but the daylight is, right? I'm more worried about on sorghum, sorghum hybrids. You get that daylight you have to worry about. So if I plant them now, I'd probably get two cut-ins out of it. Put a lot of money in the fertilizer and make it work. And for two cut-ins, I don't know. If I knew I could get three cut-ins out of it for sure, I'd probably go ahead and do it. I'd probably get this belled, turn around, and get that in. But like I said, next week's going to be raining. Next weekend, we're going to be gone. Uh, for Megan's graduation, yes, from Texas Tech. And what they say, Reckham Tech, yeah. And good thing is, she's going to grad school at AM the following year. So now we're back to being Aggies, which is what we are. So, anyway, we will, uh, like I said, we'll get this bailed. You see, I have set my cutter kind of uh, up higher, right? I set it, I think it's set to about four, three and a half, four inches right now. Because this ground is just so rough. If I set it any lower, I got stumps. I still got stumps out here. It would just tear my cutter to pieces. I would rather leave some stubble than to break my cutter. I, I, I don't want to break my cutter. So. And even when I come through here and bail, I mean, when I, I'll come here and rake, rake this together. We'll rake two or three rows together. And I don't use a real, uh, a wide rake because some of the places I bail hay on, I got some narrow areas I can get through. I think uh, maybe in the future, once I get this all done like I want, I might take that rake, sell it, or keep it for those, for those other areas and come up with a little bit uh, better wheel rake for this. I do like the wheel rake over the bar rakes after using both of them now. Uh, the bar rake I sold, it was okay. It's great if you got just extremely flat land with no problems, but I don't have that. You see, I got heels. I got terrace property to keep the erosion down. So, um, I'm, you know, I would like to get like a 10 wheel or maybe even a 12 wheel rake. Get a newer style that V's out instead of folds down. Um, you know, we'll look at that in the future. Uh, I think more importantly, probably before then, either I got to fix one of my other trap mow tractor and then use it for raking or something, or I um, prefer to buy me another tractor. Not going to buy another new one, I don't think. Uh, but uh, I am going to look at used tractors. I prefer something that doesn't have the, the diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, my Mahindra does not have that because it's an 85 horsepower. It does not require it. They got a special motor in there that actually does what it needs to do to produce a, uh, uh, to get rid of the sulfur. Now, if you go above that in the Mahindras, you had to go to the DEEF, which is not what I wanted to do. Um, but I probably look at a U tractor. Probably it's either going to be Case or John Deere. I will go back that way. And the one thing that pandemic taught me was that parts. Parts are critical. So you need to go with something that's out there. You need to go with something that has a great dealer chain. Uh, you know that you can go to the dealers and say, "Hey, I need this." They, you know, they can get it in for you. Case will have that. John Deere will have that, of course. And they're everywhere. Even Massey Ferguson will have that. Man, look at that spider. Oh my gosh, what is that? I don't know. Can y'all see that? That's creepy. Am I still recording? I hope so. I never seen that spider. That's spider there. Is that, has it got babies on it? Oh, he just saw me finally. <laughs> tickle, tickle, tickle. Yeah, there's a babies on that thing. I think they are. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I see him crawling around on it. It's 
scary? I don't like that. You don't like that at all. Two things, well, three things I don't like. Snakes, scorpions, spiders. I tolerate most spiders because I know they're not harmful, but still, uh, that creeps me out because if you were to accidentally be walking along and kick, and accidentally kick that little spider, man, all those babies would be all over you. And I don't like that. Anyway. So, so we got big plans for this year. Um, hopefully this video turns out better than the other one as far as glare. So I put a polarizer, polarizer lens on here. Polarizer? Yeah. And I, took out, I had a UV one on there before. I think it was just getting too much sunlight coming in. So hopefully this is darkening it down some. I'll try this video like this. And if that doesn't work, I'm just going to take the lenses off and just go straight GoPro. And see how that works. Is evidently it works good. I can change my uh, aperture settings, things like that, and, and it accommodates for bright light and stuff. But I am happy with how this turned. You know, got more hay on the ground than I thought I would. I think I think I was just frustrated with having to wait so long. Like I said, I'm usually belling hay in March, first of April, and we're in May. Usually, I'm sitting here in the grass is already recuperating from the first cutting. And we're ramping up to 1st of June for a second cutting. So, not not so much hay this year. Even though I got a small amount of cows now, we've really cut back. And I'm going to go with less, a lot less cows, but higher quality. You know, maybe do, you know, I, I think what I want to do is get, you know, I've dropped way down. I think I got 10 cows out there full-grown cows that are actually producing right now is what I'm down to now we're going to ramp that back up we're going to ramp that up to about 20 but we're going to use our genetics I'm not going to go out and buy uh, calves or a bread heifer or anything like that we're going to keep replacements every year not not all of them but we're going to keep you know the genetics we want and we're going to build this up to 20 good producing uh, cows. Now, now I got one out here that's not producing. She's old. She's uh, the original Duchess cow that you know just won everything she went to just about. Uh, she's out here. She's not producing calves anymore. She's old. She is how old is she? Mm, she's from what? 2005, I think. Yeah. So for a cow for for a British cow, that's pretty old. Uh, you know, I, I am considering take her you know if I if I see that she's gonna be a good enough shape I might take her this fall I mean I don't know hopefully she makes it to the fall just to see if we can do an IVF flush on her when I take our queen cow down or the one that was reserved at Fort Worth State Fair and one Louisiana State Fair and a bunch of other shows uh, I want to take her after she calves we get her bred back take her in get her IVF flush done on her and probably take the Duchess cow too and the reason why I, I, I want to take them both together because I'm going to use the same semen on both anyway. And so if we don't get no eggs out of the Duchess cow, I still have the queen cow there uh, to to use the semen on. And so we're going to do a reverse sort on it. We got a couple of different uh, uh, se uh, bull semen we want to use. Uh, we got a lot we can choose from. I'm not sure which one I want to use yet. Uh, so you know we got you got CYT Maxim we might use. We got Trump. Um, if the Duchess cow does produce her first round, I'll take it back again and do bloodstone on her because that's what Queen is. She's that Duchess bloodstone cross. And uh, then um, well, we got several other bulls we can use uh, in her also. I mean, I got I got Soul Red Value um, that looks like a very promising bull. I got the Legacy Soul Legacy. I got um, Soul uh, Red Reward which could be very good on that especially on that queen cow that, that could be something awesome just because of their phenotypes and the way they're built you know and our our bull we have out here the herd bull we got right now he's young he's this is his first breeding season we got him out here with these cows he's got them all bred except for the Dutch cow she just cycles through every couple months now, like i said she's not it hasn't been taken but he is a uh, so red knight and HD Ruby, I think, is what it is. So his name is Soul Dark Knight. 
He's a full brother to the one that the Greenhorns bought in this in the uh, spring sale last year. That boogie night bull, so boogie nights. Um, so they're full brothers. This is just a younger version. I love the name though, Dark Knight. That's kind of a cool name. We will here get him in here in a couple of weeks. I got to do some work down in the in the pens and get something ready for him. Start feeding him out, getting him ready, and then before it gets too hot, get him do a collection on him. Because I really think his calves when they start showing up here in the fall. I, I, you know, looking at his genetics, looking at his phenotype, what he looks like, how he's built, how he moves. I mean, he's going to produce some, some good calves for us. And so I think with that, we'll probably sell some semen on him. What we might do is, these calves are coming up, you know, we'll keep a couple of the heifers. We will sell a couple. We'll probably do a sale, an online sale or something. We'll probably sell some Duchess embryos, maybe some Queen embryos, or a, a right to flush on Queen. We might, I don't know how we're going to do that yet. And then we'll probably turn around and, and sell semen on that bull on our dark night pool in there also so be looking for that that will happen probably uh probably what, what february next year i guess february march time frame that's when those guys will be old enough to really actually go into a cell like that so i what we plan on doing is is having a spring sale online going forward you know put a couple really good knockout calves in there and then we'll put some embryos and some semen and stuff like that uh, coming out of here. Like I said, reduce the numbers down, go to higher quality, reduce quality calves, because it takes more money to feed a bad calf than there's a good calf. A good calf, you sit there and look, say give it feed, it's an easy feeder. You don't add all these supplements, you don't try to get fancy, you don't try to push, you don't try to hold, you just let it go. These calves that are hard doing or whatever, or, or there's, there's something about them you want to change, you try to find the magic pill, the, the, the magic ingredient, magic sauce to try to change them, that gets expensive. So, it takes more money to feed a bad one. It takes more money to feed a hard doing one because you're going to feed them a lot more feed. These cattle out here, the ones, almost all these have been shown or close to show. I mean, they are so easy flesh and so easy doing. It's, it's just that's what we want, and you know that. You know, because the end goal is the shows are fun and everything. The end goal is so they go out here and produce beef and make money, and that's what we got here. We got something that's going to do that. That's going to produce the beef. It's going to make some money. It's going to be, you know, easy enough cabin for you. But have those wean and whites. Have those year and whites the marbling scores have that rail when they go to the rail what they're going to look like i mean this is it this is what we're looking for and if i take these cattle compare them to anything else around here they blow them away you look at all these little commercial cattle herds around here they they can't hold a candle to what i'm running out here so so that tells you something it tells you we're going on the right right track here even though a lot of these have been show cattle some are not you know we got i think that one out there did not show that one right there is a new, that's a young heifer. She did not show. There's another one walking towards us. She's just, her genetics are one I might take out of the herd. Um, not to, the front end on them is not ideal for what I'm looking for, but my gosh, they easily flush. So it could be something we use in our, what we want to start as our package B program. That could be a genetic for that because it's going to be something that just puts that weight on easy. And for us, we're not going to ask them to walk, you know, across you know, a thousand acre pasture or something like that. Our cattle will pretty much stay in something as 30 acres or less on our pasture sizes. So they don't have to walk a long way for water. They don't have to do any of that. And when we do patchy, pat, uh, patchy, God, I can't talk. packaged beef going forward, which we have one out there we're raising. We're going to try it out on him. It's uh, T-Bone, wherever he's at. I think he's right over there. Um, when we start doing that, I mean, we want grass fed with a little bit of grain in them. You know, we, you know, we're not going to let a calf starve. We're going to feed them to condition. If the grass will do that, we will do it with grass. If we need to add a little bit of something like corn or something like that to give them some condition, we will add that. You know, we're going to have mineral. You know, we have mineral out here for all of our cattle. So we, they're already getting something, right? Um, so mineral, we're going to deworm. We're going to give them their shots. 
you know, if they get sick, they're gonna get some antibiotics because they'll be out of the system for the process. You know, just like when you go to the doctor, you get antibiotics. Same thing, it's the same thing in cattle. All right, it's, it's uh, penicillin, it's amoxicillin, it's whatever. So, um, but there will be, you know, we'll do package beef. We'll try to make sure that we get good, good genetics in that. That will do something that marbles good, that grades out well. And I got Megan who can go and look at the carcasses and say, is it a good carcass or not? Because she is a national champion meat judger and a national champion individual meat judger and an All-American. So we have that going for us. But I, I got to brag on her a little bit more. And of course, you know, I got Alex, my helper, is right up there. So he's going to be, we're going to be doing a lot of work down here. Uh, Zoe is here and along with Jess and her husband. So uh, we'll be working on a lot of things, you know, come up with a, some marketing things that we can do, some printouts, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna rely on Zoe to help me out with that. Uh, you know, give me some information. Uh, two granddaughters, her her two daughters, uh, one's about to start showing, so we'll, we'll get some show calves going again. Gotta put a new barn up. You see I got poles all around her. I said out front of the new barn. Get that up, tear the old one down, keep some of the stuff inside that we got, but tear it out. Yeah, once you get the new one done. But first, I gotta get my shop done. Right over there where the Beller's at. We got a patio that's gotta go in next to the house. Um, so we can have an outdoor kitchen, outdoor area where we can eat and have fun, have parties, stuff like that. Do some concrete work, do some uh, gravel. Oh, gotta get some gravel in this place. Yeah, it's, it's never ending in this black soil. It just sucks the gravel in. So we'll be doing that. But first thing, shop. Second thing, patio. Some gravel, concrete, barn. And uh, once we get all that done, I think we'll be in good shape. We'll, uh, this fence is going to be pushed back. Uh, some, like this, is going to turn into more of a hay, hay pasture also. We'll push the cattle back. We got some, there's some wood poles way back there. That's the start of a cross fence coming off of the pins behind the barn. And it goes all the way back over to there. Way back there. And that way we can keep the cows over there. Until we're done cutting hay, then we'll turn them in here. So I think what we'll do probably this fall, like I said, we'll do all the plowing and leveling out everything. Then what we'll do is come in here and put like a uh, rye, especially on this side, do a rye, wheat, clover, something else mix in here. When it's up strong, turn the cows in on it. When it starts, gets eaten down a little bit, take them back out, put them back on hay, back over in the winter pen behind the barn. This area here, when we plow it and get it going, we'll probably come in and put rye and maybe a, a vetch to hold the soil in place and add some nitrogen to reinvigorate the soil, to aerate it out. And then that way, we can come in, we can bell that rye off in the spring, and early spring, because that'll be something we plant in the fall. And then we can come in and decide if we're gonna put uh, like a German millet or a Sudan or some kind of a sorghum hybrid in here going forward. And next spring, plant that in coastal Bermuda, or you know, variant of Bermuda. Probably it's not gonna be coastal. It'll be like Tifton or something, or uh, Mohawk. I think one of those other blends, something like that. And either keep this going in Sudan, or maybe change it to Bermuda. Also, I uh, don't know. I want to have I want to have Sudan available to me. That all depends on if I can pick up a uh, another field somewhere that's more flat and level that I can go in and that's been used in a crop rotation, then I can use something like that for that too. So, but that's, I'm looking for a field like that. Anybody that knows, one here locally to me, I'm looking to uh, lease some land like that. Looking to lease hay fields, pasture, whatever. Don't, I mean, when I say pasture, I'm looking for anything clean. I don't need it all trees up. The reason I want pasture because I can cut some hay on it if I want to. I can run a few commercial cows on there to carry some embryos or something if I need to do that. And, uh, so just run those through real quick and make it easy. So, anyway, a lot of talking. Um, didn't cut this, like I say, but it's extremely wet down here. But after looking at this, how this dried out, I probably should have. But I know how wet it is right now. It's, it's still a little wet. It's a swamp. You can see how tractor prints went in there pretty heavy. Got some trash we're going to pick up. Always picking up trash out here. Wind blows a lot. Trash blows in. Always picking up. So let's just walk down here now. Actually, I'm hoping this filter works good on this because I don't 
when I do a lot of work on the computer. I know how to do it. I like for videos just turn out correct. But, you know, I wish I could go through and like talk well. I actually a good time all together. But then you hear all my mistakes, all my crazy sayings. Even a curse word bomb every now and then. Um, I got a good friend of mine who's from New York, John Barthol. And we like to uh, cut up a lot. So some of that New Yorker has rubbed off on me over the years. Rubbed off on me in, over the years. So I get, we get to talking. It comes out quick. And I'm a grumpy old man too sometimes. So yeah, there's a lot of water in there. So I'm glad I did not cut that. Because it would have just been a mess. The grass would have stayed there and matted down. And then this summer it would have caused me a problem. But over here, yeah, that's muddy. You see water here where I came through with the tractor, turning the cutter over here. Yeah, and it's still pretty wet here. You know, a little dry out, but that was a lot worse. Here, I was thinking we weren't going to get that much grass because this I was seeing this every day and there was not a whole lot in here. But it actually turned out decent. Yeah, I like a lot more hay. But it's not bad. It's more than I thought I had in here. But I will say, once you get up over there, there's a lot. So, I, don't know, I, I think we're going to do all right. Yes, we're left behind. You know, farming, some of farming stuff. I always, you know, well, when I, let me put it this way when I, where I work at in the sell, in the sell side, and my real job, my actual job at Pace or anything. Um, you know, we say hope is not a strategy. Hope is one of those four letter words in sales. In farming, hope is everything. Because you gotta hope the weather's gonna cooperate. You gotta hope the cows are gonna go have the calf by herself. You gotta hope that you can get this bell before it rains or too much moisture or dew hits it or something like that and really messes up your day, right? So yeah, there's a lot of hope in farming. Oh, by the way, I wear this Columbia shirts because I love the way they feel and they block the sun out pretty good. PFG, does that stand for professional farmer? I think so. Anyway, I think just change that. I don't think it's the other thing. I think it's professional farmer. But anyway, so a lot of good grass. It turned out, I said, I mean, it far exceeded what I thought it was going to do, which is good. So I can relax a little bit. A little bit worried. Uh, I was in total panic, meltdown mode. You can ask my wife, she'll tell you. And I was like, crap, we don't want to get no hay. It's going to be a problem. So, and now somebody wants to call me. Let's see. Let's see who this is. I got to get it.